Mm, welcome, beautiful people, on this beautiful Monday, sunny Monday here in Georgia. How are you? Welcome to this YouTube channel. Aviva sings out, that's me, I sing out. And as you'll learn in class today, and you might already know, me singing out my songs is not just about being a singer-songwriter. It's also about being a self-healer, being aligned with my energy because the process of me singing is healing for my body. And you might learn a little bit of that today if you're willing to let go of some inhibitions and sing yourself a little bit. Ah. <sighs> So yes, the double meaning of Viva Sings Out. Yes, I'm singing out my songs. I'm also singing out to protect, preserve, and strengthen my energy. And this is why I can't submit to any kind of industry career unless it's fully aligned with my spirit. So I'm not really a commercial artist. I'm not in the machine. I respect that in its own regard. Um, but I can never compromise my integrity. So hopefully, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm going to get some music going right here. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. Chewing some garlic on this beautiful day. When you're not around a lot of people, you can chew as much garlic as you want. It's so wonderful for the body antifungal, mm. antibacteria, and yet it actually feeds the good bacteria. It doesn't really kill the good bacteria, so you're good with that. We're going to the clutter bug side B, and we are playing some lullabies here, turning down the volume, and there we go. Hello, Jabri. As you see on the right-hand side, I kind of summarize the concepts of class today. Are you blurring me, Qigong? So as I'm talking, please get in touch with your breath, with your heartbeats. Set your space so you feel good in that space, so you feel safe, so you feel connected, grounded. In your zone. to be here on earth right now, learning the lessons, be grateful for the blessings. Thank you so much for sharing, Jim. Are you blurring me, Qigong? It is my goal to help you feel clarity in your divine nature today and to really clear away the distractions, clear away the obstacles. Okay, that's in part three. That's part of letting go. Ooh, I gotta sneeze. Ha! 
<laughs> it's also in the description, Patrick, below. So it's not it's not lost. And it will be replayed as a live chat. I think there must be something in my house. Maybe maybe the lizard left something behind that's making me a little allergic. Excuse me. Thank you. So yes. Pay attention to your heartbeats and your breath. I want to help you feel clarity today. And the tricky thing about feeling blurred is that a lot of us don't even know we're blurred. So we get self-critical, we get tired, we push ourselves and push ourselves and it's like trying to drive without glasses on if you need glasses it's dangerous it's dangerous to push yourself through when you don't have clarity to push yourself through the psychic territory so when you take the time to meditate and to do qigong you can interact with people with a clear heart and a clear mind and you can see clearly the energy that they're expressing instead of it being blurred because you're blurred and so you see this gets real metaphysical when you're blurred, not only do you feel off and not clear and wonderful and 100% healthy, but also kind of the main metaphysical rule is that I see you and me. And I see me and you. So if I'm blurry, I can only see a blurred me in you. I can't see the 100% secure and healthy me in you if I've been blurred. So when we take our times to unblur, and of course any Qigong does that, but I like to dissect it even further so you are aware that you are blurred. Because all of these little forms of awareness are hopefully encouragement for you to do Qigong as much as you feel is possible to bring you back to that balanced state. And Qigong is a state of mind as well. So you don't have to actually do moves to always feel that state of mind, though it can really help you. I feel another sneeze coming on. I think my body's just transforming certain things and turning them into sneezes. <laughs> I just started taking artichoke extract and I think it's doing something. Well, it could be the alcohol in it, too. It could be a lion or a flying penguin allergy, too. But I don't know. Very interesting. So what was I just saying? Uh, it's also a state of mind. Because, for example, if someone puts you down, or if you're criticizing yourself, or if you walk into a room and something just feels off, you can interpret that as, whoa, my energy just got blurred. Are you blurring me? Like, basically, anytime someone doesn't see you and see God in you and see the divinity in you and see your beauty and your magic and that you're a miracle, and 
then they're blurred to you. Then they're blurring you. They're not really looking at you. They're not really seeing you. And sure, that could, you'd be partly to blame because you could be presenting a blurred image of yourself, you know? But the more all of us work on this, the more if you're around someone that can see through your blur, then it helps you see through your blur and become more clear. You know, when you feel that unconditional love, you can't expect others to just be able to do that. <sighs> so that is quite a gift. I'm going to inspect for some lizard leftovers. So, my name is Aviva, and my intention is to be here for all of you and to help you ask the question to the world, to significant others, to your friends, to yourself. Are you blurring me? Are you putting me on the outside of my wheel instead of helping to stay in my core so that I am just being discombobulated and spun around in circles and it's hard for me to see clearly because I'm just like, eh, 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 eh. to help us all experience that question. And of course, to rem remove the blurs. What are your intentions today? I am okay. Thank you, Shabri. <coughs> Jabri says his intention is to be here with you today, and he's feeling great today on this beautiful day. And we are sunshine children. He'd like to focus on his arms and his feet today. And he's been using the magic gel. Wonderful. I'm so glad that's helping you. If y'all are interested in learning about an amazing pain relieving gel, all natural, incredibly effective, it's linked in the description. Not yet. I will put it there. <coughs> Any other intentions? the eucalyptus maybe what are your intentions today I'm waiting on you notice your breath notice your heartbeats your beliefs. What is your intention for class today? And thank you for being here. Hey Patrick, his intention for class today is to get focused and rest after helping a distraught friend and I'm feeling drained, but very clear. It's true, sometimes when we help people, it's exhausting, but it can be clarifying when you're sharing heart to heart and really understanding each other's miseries. As we wait for possible other intentions, let's do our second chakra mudra about creating for women, the left thumb is on top, 
and then it's like thumb, thumb, next finger, next finger. And then for men, the right thumb is on top. And if one just feels better the other direction, then you can do it that way. It's okay. I mean, if you're in, you know, by one of the equators, the, the polarization of the magnetization of your yin and yang channels could just be flipped. Breathe in your intentions. Release anything in the way. this position and we're going to start right away with the number one deep glorifying exercise which is softening softening the hardness that could be put upon you in one way or another from yourself from others from this world from the struggle, from survival mode. Soften a little bit and see if you can hear the song on the inside of you. And see if you can have the courage to just start humming it, whistling it, like the concept of whistling while you work. Uh, you know, like a little kid just going <laughs> listening to that inner melody the inner symphony if you're an artist if you're a musician a really easy way to do this is to look at your art just observe it like like a child like you're looking at it for the first time listen to your own music just listen to it what you're listening to and what you're watching and what you're looking at is your inner vibrations in motion creating, which cleanses your energy, which expresses your energy, which expresses your talent, which gives your life purpose. It's uniquely part of you. And see if you can give that a melody. If you're mainly an artist, a not music artist, there's a lot of forms of art that aren't music, see if you can give it a sound. Just see what comes out. And see how it soothes you like a lullaby. And, and I think I'm gonna pause the music because that can affect your inner melody. Where's this music? I'm gonna pause it. And I want you to try to get in touch with your inner melody. We'll just do that for five minutes. Maybe mute me for a moment. <clears throat> I don't want to influence what you hear. Get in touch with your inner grandma and inner grandpa or inner five-year-olds when you stopped caring about what other people think. When you didn't start caring about what other people think.
Feel the vibrations through your body. If it doesn't feel right, it might not be. Switch it up. If it's, You might be forcing it. Gently soften and let it release. Reverse sensory deprivation. This is like when someone throws or hurls energy at you that feels violent in some way, that feels unvalidating to you, that blurs you, like we're talking about. It's the opposite of a hug. Getting a really good hug is like getting a sensory fix. So when you get the opposite, you've been sensorily deprived. So we'll just start with just a gentle hug, hugging yourself. Now the thing about being shocked by someone hurling negative energy at you or lying to you is that it might make it really hard to even receive a hug. You know, I know we talked in other classes, I think my very last class, about the ability to receive. And so it's like when you're shocked, it's like the receptors are gone. So you're gonna have to, to, to reverse the sensory deprivation, you're gonna have to actually create the receptors again too. And you can just do Qigong 
you can rub your hands together to create the sensation and feel the energy to clear it. It's so ironic because it's almost the opposite of what it says. It's like when someone blurs you, it's like they're taking away like the energy static blur, you know, that you can usually feel around you, like that dense kind of energy of chi. It's like when you're blurred, it's like you're two dimensional. You don't have the clarity of seeing the energy, which might look blurry. It's just ironic. So just doing any kind of qigong moves, feeling your qi helps to create those receptors, the sensory receptors, so that you can have a sensory experience. Now sensory overload can also call de cause deprivation, ironically. So you're just going to enliven yourself. You're going to, you can listen to music that you love. You can um, read a stimulating book, play Tetris. You want to enliven your senses. You can smell something that you enjoy smelling. <sighs> and of course, do Qigong. So I feel like we should do our Wu Qigong form during this form part of the class. The sensory fix, getting a sensory fix getting a good hug, doing qigong is like getting a good hug. So we're gonna just stand up and do our wu qigong form. <clears throat> we'll start with actually the hugging twist that I had in my trailer. We're going to cross the right foot over the left, hug yourself and gently twist to the left, taking a nice deep breath in and then release forward. We're gonna do that four more times. Breathing out through every cell of your body. All right, other side, left foot over the right. Keep the left heel up and twist to the right. And slowly come back. And again. And also before we do qigong, if you know if you're resisting qigong, um, clear balancing movements are really good sensory fixes. So like just lifting one foot up and just feeling your balance is like a really fun way to like jiggle that ball that could be stuck in you. You know if you're in a stuck position to try to balance on one head. I mean, one leg, <laughs> if you're a two-headed monster, one head balance, then you're basically like moving that ball that could be stuck in one position, you know, like in mousetrap. Okay, the other leg, find a balanced position. It's just a really good way to get that sensory fix. If you're not doing Qigong, jumping up and down real quick is a great way to get the sensory fix. Wrapping um, something around you is a good way to get a sensory fix. You know, blankets are comforting, not only because they're warming, but they give you a sensory fix. And it just squeezing something around yourself gives you a sensory fix. So if someone hurts your feelings, you might 
even start shivering and it's not because you're cold, but it's because you need a sensory fix. So you can squeeze yourself. So, and I'll, I'll do my best to review all this in the description. So we've got jumping up and down, we've got balancing, and we've got wrapping something around ourselves. And of course, doing the Qigong. Let's do another balancing move. It's just, let's just try to lift one leg all the way to the side and reach out. <clears throat> and the other way. And of course, the light touching that we did in steamy Qigong is another sensory fix. And smelling something. Good. All right, let's go ahead and put our yin hand under our belly button, yang on top. Press in a little bit, knees bounce up and down. And the shoulders bounce up and down at the same time. I'm gonna take my socks off. Now, earthen building is one big sensory fix, by the way. Doing it and living in it and standing on it. So your shoulders move at the same time as your knees. Now this movement, basically the Wuji Gong form, I'm gonna theorize in this class and hopefully convince y'all that just doing the Wuji Gong actually addresses pretty much one, two, three, four, and five. Because this move alone, the bouncing is about five recognition, validating your own rhythm. Because it's not about going at a specific rhythm. You really want to get in touch with the rhythm inside and almost feel like this movement is like comes automatically. <coughs> telling you, it feels like someone pepper sprayed me from the inside out. I'm like releasing some kind of toxin from the liver cleanse I'm doing. I really believe that. Shake, 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 Let's bring that bottom hand out, face up, and the top face down. Shake, 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 shake. And shaking in itself is a sensory fix, just like jumping is. Trampolining is amazing. Now, one person has the theory that addictions, whether it's sugar, alcohol, crack, are caused by sensory deprivation. It was actually earthen builders that explored it. They said the stimulation that someone gets from earthen building and just being in an earthen building helps actually to relieve addictions. So addictions are from sensory depletion, sensory deprivation, which is why a lot of addicts are bored all the time because they don't have a sensory experience that is normal for others. It's hard for them to feel perhaps the receptors are blown or whatnot. You know, it's all connected to the emotions. See, they're going to explore this one day. You know, obviously they have psychosomatic issues in the books, but they're really going to explore how it's all one system, energetic, 
emotional, all connected to the physical issues that we have. And shake it out. Needs to be explored more. And come to stillness. And we are going to, I want you to see my shoulder. We're going to drop the left shoulder down and release, and then the right, going back and forth nice and gently. And rotate your left shoulder back three times. And the right. And the left. And the right. And both at the same time. And come up. And just let your arms float down like feathers. Come up halfway and reverse. And bring your yin hand, right for women, left for men. 
above your Sahasrara, the top of your head where the ears would meet. Climbed up and the other hand on top. Fingers spread and just feel the energy pour down into you. It's amazing that there's such quick recovery that you can do from being blurred. Out to the side, please. All right, lift the left heel up, bending both knees, rotate that left knee towards the right. And reverse directions, please. And relax the left heel down, lift the right heel up, bending both knees and rotate the right knee towards the left. And the other direction, please. Both feet together, knees together, thighs together, bend, and little tiny rotations to the left. And the other direction, please. And back and forth. Swing back and forth, keeping the feet on the ground. I mean, there's obviously a very clear metaphor in blurring also being like an out of alignment thing. So doing Qigong really helps your body get in alignment. So of course it's gonna help you with clarity as well. And we often go, we get pulled out of alignment when we're blurred. Like I said, you're if you're a wheel going round and round and you're not in the center, not only are you out of alignment, you're getting very dizzy. Everything is moving instead of you just staying in place. Relax your face. Good. 
come to stillness again. Arms in ready position at the side or in front of you and just connect with the earth. Okay, arms up, two fists away. We're going to bend the knees and we're gonna rotate the hips in a circle, keeping that same distance as if you're holding a little energy ball there. And the other direction, please. And then you're gonna open up wide, bend the knees and lift the left arm up to the ear and just let it float down like a feather. <sighs> now I'm going to reach across the body. Back and forth.
Okay. So now it's the Wuji Gong, where for five minutes you just move however the body wants to, and also allow yourself to express. And so this actually deals with um, four to structure. And actually three is um, also just doing the Wu Gong is taking care of yourself and being your best friend. But also we can we can actually, three and four can be involved in the Wu Gong. Three being just talking to yourself, connecting with your own energy. You know, doing the Wu Gong is having a conversation with yourself. And then the destructure, like just, not having to have structure in your movements, literally letting yourself just just be spontaneous, you know? This is a little structured because you're doing qigong, you're moving slowly, you wanna feel your qi, but you can make noises, you know? It also, number four is also about like, if you want to, like, if you feel like crying comes up about something and you're upset about something, cry. You know, some people are like, oh, if I'm crying, if I'm crying, I'm weak. Or they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I upset you. Please don't cry. And they try to stop you from crying, but they can't make it better because the hurt's already there. You, you know, either you're grieving or, or your feelings got hurt. And so the only way through is to feel those feelings and to let them express fully so that you can process the pain. You know, it's like if you're blending up a smoothie, you gotta let it blend to make that alchemy. Emotions are like alchemy. They blend things up and process them. Let them do what they're there to do. You're not taking it out on others, you're just letting it be. So three more minutes of the Wuji. I'm gonna step away from the screen. Might even go get some sunshine. couple more minutes.
right. How y'all feeling? Good job with the Wuchi Gong. Hmm. All right, let's hold a position, standing position, as we talk about number three a little bit more, which is letting go. So I've been talking to a lot of people lately and they talk more than they listen. So it made me realize that a lot of people just talk, and me included, I talk a little too much when I'm upset. Um, it's like talking is trying to feel the feelings that I haven't gotten to or something like that. And it's like, or it could just be like, I'm upset because I wasn't validated by someone. And I feel like if I keep talking, 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 then the other person will validate me and hear me. And it's also because I, I do that when you know, I don't feel heard enough and maybe when I don't journal enough and it's almost like my talking is journaling, you know, it's venting and it's not really a conversation. It's like, it's like, it doesn't give the other person a chance to listen. It doesn't give you a chance to listen. So just notice part of clearing your blur is letting go and making sure you're not talking to prove yourself to anyone else. Because the truth is you might have felt silenced and the part of you that felt silenced isn't even expressing itself. So you're doing access talking to try and heal the silence, but it's not going to make the silence be heard. What was silenced, which was your heart. So you got to stop talking for a moment to talk to yourself, to be your own best friend and be like, Hey, I'm listening. Tell me more. Okay. I hear you. You know, and the more you can talk to yourself in that regard, whether it's, you know, having therapy or journaling or just literally stopping and hearing yourself and making your emotions known to yourself. And admitting to yourself, oh, that hurt. Or, I hear you. Just stop the excess chatter. Enjoy the quiet. Enjoy listening to your own thoughts. And talking back to your own thoughts. So moving on to the D structure. This is like erasing a chalkboard. Like there's so many different ways to erase a chalkboard. And so obviously when the chalkboard is completely erased, it's a beautiful clean slate. So someone, when your energy gets blurred, it could be that there's things written all over you that's just blurring you and you need a clean slate so you can see your perfection, you know, how God created you. Like I have clarity, you know, amidst this chaos. Like I don't have to take on the chaos on my chalkboard. So how do you erase all this chalk? I mean, there's no one way you can do circular motions. You can go up and down, you can go sideways and it takes elbow grease. So that's what, when you're just doing movements, however you feel like doing it, and your body wants to move this way, and you want to express yourself Rawr! that way, and you don't inhibit yourself in any way, that's like you are the eraser, just erasing all the excess chalk. Because when it's a clean slate, it's like having a clean dance floor that you can dance all over and roll around the floor and do your push-ups and sit-ups and whatever else you want to do. If there's writing on your chalkboard. It's like clutter being all around your floor and you just can't move. 
So sometimes the movement actually clears the floor. So that's what destructure is about. Like we have a lot of structure and sometimes we really need to destructure, like have a time when there's no structure, walking in the woods, not having a set way of how it needs to be, not everything having to be exercise. So five, recognition. So validation and recognition really sharpens your ability to see yourself, your ability to see the good in yourself, see the talent in yourself. (sighs) When someone sticks it to you, that bludgeoning causes like a psychic bleeding and then there's blood everywhere and that causes blurring. So when you validate yourself, you take that bludgeoning out of you and you protect yourself, you shield yourself. So there's a lot of fun ways you can do that. One is by literally just slowing down and going at a pace that feels natural to you with whatever you're doing. Anything whether it's eating, walking, shopping. Go at your own pace, like what feels really natural to your body. Even right now, when you're walking in place, find a walk. You might want to slow down or speed up. There's no structure. There's no set rule as to what your frequency is supposed to be. Only you can feel that. You are validating your natural frequencies. You know that feeling when you feel rushed and it puts you in like a deer in headlights kind of feeling. You're just like, wait, I'm not ready for this. Like, why are you judging me? Why are you calling me this? Why are you analyzing me? Like, all these weird vibrations can be thrown at you from other people. And it's like, that's not natural. That doesn't feel natural. And you can say that to yourself. You can say it out loud and be like, this doesn't feel natural. It doesn't it's not natural to have self doubt. It's not natural to be self critical. It's not natural to be insecure. I'm not judging you for that, but it's good to recognize this is not a natural feeling. This doesn't come from God. This comes from being human. This comes from fear. It doesn't come from love. Thinking there's something wrong with you. Uh uh-uh. uh. So you can slow down. You can be like, some when someone's rushing you, you know that's what's dangerous. Rushing. People think it's the Russians, but it's rushing. That's what's dangerous. It stops us from being protected by our own natural frequencies that tell us what is safe and what isn't. And rushing pulls can pull the body out of alignment, make you discombobulated, make you blurry. (sighs) So besides connecting to our natural vibrations, another way to produce recognition in yourself is by having some metaphysical binoculars. See, when you do this, you can just see clearer. And sometimes things are so distant. Sometimes experiences of yours are so far away and they weren't processed right away. And from a distance, 
they look a certain way. But if you put on your metaphysical binoculars and get closer to them, so they're not blurry, doing the matrix therapy or any other kind of therapy that works for you, where you can look and focus in on a situation, a trauma that was blurred by being so far in the distance, go into it closer and find that clarity, find the clarity of of the harmony that you can find within it from a distance. <clears throat> time does heal some things, but it also makes some things get moldy. I mean, eventually things all break down, but if you sweep all these things under your bed and you think it's out of the way, well, you're sleeping with it every night and you're breathing in those toxins. So get closer to the things that are in your distance that are harming you. You know, and that's also another good reason to process things right away because as they get further and further away, they get blurry. You can't see them clearly. We're going to go ahead and move on. Does anyone have any questions about what we are exploring today? Lots of metaphysical, mental stuff. We're going to lift the left arm up while y'all are thinking about possible questions. Right behind the left and come down. Yeah, and also sometimes people need to be upset in order to process things. So that's an interesting thing to, to get in touch with as well. It's a, it's a balancing act. It's all good. It's like feelings cook, cook the dinner, putting the oven on. You can't cook food by just talking to it. Another side. Unless it's a salad. I think also as empaths, sometimes we talk a lot when someone's upset because we don't want to feel upset with them. It's like we're protecting ourselves, but <clears throat> that could be our own fear. Who knows? I don't know all the answers. Only you know what's right in the situation. I'm just presenting other psychic possibilities. Just listen to the um, script going on in the background. Is it saying, I don't want to feel it? I don't want to feel it. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to feel this. You know, just listen deeply and see if that's a truth. And if not, then it's all good. And tap. Mm -hmm. 
And then it's always, I'm just analyzing this from all different angles. There's definitely pure laughter that comes from crying. And there's also sometimes fake laughter. That's just laughing just to pretend the sadness isn't there. And that's, I don't know if that's good. But I know that self-doubt is kind of the way to measure it. If you have self-doubt while you're laughing, that that's often a fake laugh. Oh, that's a really good observation about yourself, Jabri. I think that's actually a pretty valid thing. Mm -hmm. To explore. And maybe the more you let those upset feelings out when you're excited, maybe, maybe it won't happen all the time. Maybe it happens because it, it's something in you that hasn't been felt and that excitement is healing your heart. Let's stretch the fingers. Um, all the way down. And then the whole hand. And the other way. And the other hand. It's good to ask yourself. I mean, I deal with this a lot with clients and stuff. It's like, is the inner script, I don't want them to feel this. It's like, yeah, we don't want each other to feel pain. But there's a fine line when you learn, you know, how to be a primal therapist or a breath therapist or matrix therapy. Like, sometimes you almost need to push people in their pain in order to release it. Because there's so much therapies that pull people out of the pain, but the pain wasn't the issue, it was what was causing the pain, which is the issue. So when you gently nudge people into a deeper feeling or a pain of what's going on, what you're doing is you're helping them be aware of what, what was causing the pain to begin with. But it takes a lot of skill. Like it's not something to just like experiment with because you don't wanna push people into a pain that's unnecessary. All right, let's rotate each toe a few times in each direction. But, you know, just a human way to do it is just to say, you know, instead of pulling people out of their feeling, just say it's really normal that you feel this way. Do you want to feel it? How can I help you feel it? You want to go into it? A little deeper, and if they say no, that's fine. We are rainbows. You don't want to. We don't want to deprive each other of our feelings. If you say, "Oh, I don't want this person to feel this pain. I don't want the person to feel this," it's almost like saying, "I don't want this person to feel joy," because it's like you have to have the whole spectrum, the whole rainbow, where you feel nothing. Pull the toes back and rub the bottom of the feet. And then rub in between your toes. Some of my most beautiful moments in life was crying with other people. <clears throat> Find a point on the bottom of your foot and hold this for 20 seconds. Crying releases the blurry. Like I said, crying releases over 38 toxins in the body they've studied scientifically. Tearing from onions, I think it's only three to seven. So there's alchemy that goes on with our emotions. It's so mysterious and miraculous. I'm in awe 
I'm in awe of the creator. That's why pets are so good. They're so good at just staying with emotion and deepening into it and just helping it be real. Tap up and down. Find a trigger point under the knee on the inside of the leg. Hold that for 20 seconds. Y'all, thank you so much for being here. It's been such a journey that I've started doing this ever since I stopped teaching at the Y because of the lockdown. I would love to be able to at least make what I was making at the YMCA, which is a little more than $30 a class. Um, I really look forward to making that goal happen, which is about, let's say if 10 of you maybe pay about $40, $50 a month to keep this going. That would be incredible. It would be like I have my job back. Um, so yeah, whatever you can do, and honestly, don't feel like you have to. Just you being here is amazing. But if if 10 of you are able to, to pay um, to just, you know, Help, help this continue and help this sustain about $5 a class, I guess it comes to. That would relieve some of my stress, but I know that I'm meant to do this anyway. Um, so, and then the knee on the outside of the leg now, five fingers above, find that acupressure point. So I'll just put that out there to help that manifest. Um, I have cash app. And um, I have Patreon, so that's a real easy way to just be a monthly supporter. <clears throat> and then you get little treats also that way. But honestly, even if you did $1 a month, that's awesome too. There's no amount too small, no amount too big, and it could be zero. And I'm totally cool with that. <coughs> All right. Tap up and down and brush. Brush, brush, brush. All right, other foot. Oh, let me read your comment, Patrick. Rotate the toes a few times in each direction on the other foot. It is a disarming of self-destructive energy, helping them laugh their way back from the ledge. I agree, but I understand and empathize with their pain. We always cry a lot too. I hold space first. Cool. Um. You are welcome, Jabri. Oh, yeah. An emergency situation is different than, you know, daily emotions. Oh. All right. Rotate your ankle a few times in each direction. But I do want you guys to focus on yourselves in class today. It's just really important to build your own energy up. And other people are a reflection of you. Rub the bottom of the feet. And rub between the toes. Good. Enjoy your day, Jabri. And find the point on the bottom of the foot and hold that for 20 seconds.
I feel like you feel a purpose in what you're doing, Patrick. I think it's important to connect with that validation of what you're going for. And There's just something more that I'm sensing there. Something that feels like it's blurring you a little bit. Ooh, this point is intense. Hold that trigger point on the bottom of your foot. Yeah, just get in touch with what needs to be validated within you, Patrick, in those situations. A little bit more, what needs to be recognized. I think there is a lot of recognition, but I think there's some things that are being blurred and causing a little bit of self-doubt. Ooh, that feels good, that point. Oh my goodness, okay. Um, under the knee, on the inside of the leg, find a point. Hold that. 20 seconds. Really, it's on the outside of the knee now. About four or five fingers. Ooh, we've got to end class on the outside of that for 20 seconds. Good job. Tap up and down and brush. Excellent job today, y'all. Any questions? Any more things that you guys want to share?
in this safe space. I honor you for being here today, working on this vessel and so much more, the energy through it. I hope you feel more clear after this hour and a half of clarifying the blurs, excuse my burp. I'm gonna give you guys um, my PayPal Zelle info if you'd like to throw me a donation for class. He talks to Rachel today, good for you. And my cash app is AATFP. And my Patreon is lots of love to y'all. We're gonna go ahead and do an optional bow out momentarily. See if there's any more questions. No, you don't have to. I, I've been talking to her too, Jeffrey. It's all good. Thank you so much for the thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. If you want to subscribe as well, that would make my day. And keep on sharing these videos. I am almost at more than a million views. Probably hit that today or tomorrow. And I appreciate you all so, 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 so much for that. Let's go ahead and honor all the lineage holders. And all of the teachers. Fill your hearts with gratitude and compassion and spread this out to the whole entire world. Mm, thank you all for everything you do for people in this world and everything you do to hold space for emotions and processing. It's very necessary and fun. I'll see you all Wednesday for surfing yourself, Qigong. So get ready. Get your surfboards ready. We are going to be going for a 